Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, January 16th, 2024, let's get into it. Boy, oh boy, I did not want to make a video today. I've been, uh, I, and this is something I encourage you to do. I always, you know, I don't make a video every day. I can't do it. I mean, I have to work around the house. And so today I was doing a lot of painting. I painted a lot of molding uh, along the door because I put in new windows. Uh, they're coming on January 29th to finally finish up the window project, which started back in July of 2022. Just to tell you how uh, long it takes to put new windows in your house with Renewal by Anderson. I'm going to call them out on it. And then, of course, you know, then I get into, well, maybe I should paint the molding in the, in the bathroom. And maybe I should paint the door to the garage. And anyway, let's get into the news. So we've got Russia and Iran that have a new treaty. Uh, it looks like um, Russia has basically signed on that if the United States uh, or if the, uh, the Western world wants to go up against Iran... I uh, we're Russia's going to come to their aid now. I don't know if that means a nuclear uh, treaty or not. I I can't tell you that, but I will tell you this: Iran just launched missiles on Syria, and that is a statement. These are the longest range missiles that Iran has ever launched, and they launched them at ISIS, which you know, a lot of people don't understand. ISIS is backed by the United States. Do you? The criminal United States, because oh yeah, we're gonna we we're there to protect against ISIS. No, we fund ISIS in Syria, and so Iran wanted to make a statement because they can hit Israel anytime they want. So they wanted to say, you know what, we're just gonna launch against the ISIS-backed rebels or the ISIS-backed terrorists in Syria. Now imagine that. I think that's a hell of a statement, and I think that Iran did the right thing because i'm glad that they're killing isis uh, people in uh, in syria uh, i don't think it's a bad idea boy i tell you the middle east is just blowing up all across the board huh we got the hooties they uh they just launched on another ship <laughs> it, boy isn't it great that the uh we wasted uh i don't know what maybe 10 million dollars worth of missiles on yemen uh and and now they just launched on a ship in the uh, Red Sea. Oh, thank God we've got the military that we do. <laughs> they don't seem to be very effective against the, the honey badgers, as I love the Canadian prepper likes to call them down there in uh, Yemen. Uh, and, by the way, they call them the Houthis. I call them the Yemen fighters. You understand, they are the government of Yemen right now. I mean, okay, well, whatever. There, 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 there are rebel forces on the other side and it depends on where you want to look at it uh, but you can look at it either way so we've got new russian artillery that's moving to the front now these new weapons that russia has developed uh they've got the longest range of any artillery that uh has ever been produced by russia and, and in the world so that means they can stand back and just pulverize the Ukrainians. Uh, well, if you didn't consider the drones and the the air bombs and in the Kenzal missiles and <laughs> I, I, you know, I I I, I want to laugh, but I want to cry. I mean, the Ukrainians just they're getting obliterated on every way possible. We need a negotiated peace. That's all I want to say. And so now, now that there's no air support left in uh, Ukraine, we, we're looking at uh, operations that are predicted with Russian helos uh, landing uh, uh, stormtroopers, if you want to call them that, uh, behind uh, Ukrainian uh, fortified lines, and they're going to come in from the front and the back. I, I see that happening within the next month. Um, I just don't, don't see anything. We did get news that the Russians may have lost two AWACS planes. Uh, 
that that was huge. Uh, boy, I, and there's been no real confirmation on what happened. Now, I've heard reports that it was friendly fire from Russia that took these two. You understand, a lot of people don't understand the military. An AWACS plane is hugely expensive, hugely complex. I mean, the number of man hours that go into making an AWACS plane is just beyond imagination. I mean, it is, it's, it's kind of like, you know, remember in Skynet, when you had the Terminator, you know, and you had the main computer, <laughs> and everybody wanted to get to the main computer, but they couldn't get there, you know, and uh, because all the Terminators and everything out on the field, they didn't really mean a whole lot. They were just directed by the central computer. Well, that's kind of what an AOX plane is. And so for Russia to lose two of these, uh, it's it's a huge, huge development. Uh, and if, if Russia shot them down, <laughs> which, which I've heard speculation, but I, 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 I find that very, very hard to believe. <clears throat> Probably the greatest, and why I'm making this video is, um, wow, <clears throat> huge. Huge. Trump wins Iowa. Trump wins Iowa. And not by a little bit. I mean, he is now a number one, you know, assassination material. I, 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 I don't see how he survives until the election. The deep state is not going to allow. It's just like John F. Kennedy. It's just like Martin Luther King. They are not going to allow him to survive, but uh, he won. Uh, good Lord. I mean, so let's see. Trump got 51% of the vote, and it's not all in yet. I imagine it might even be more. DeSantis, uh, a lot of people, you know, like Dave Rubin, they, they wanted DeSantis. He got 21.3% of the vote, and Haley got, well, she, thank God, the Haley neocon liberal lunatic she only got 19%. And then, of course, Vivek, uh, he got 7.7%. Now, I will tell you this. There's a lot of speculation right now going on that Ben Carlson is going to be Trump's uh, vice presidential candidate. I don't know. I guess that would be a good pick. I, I got nothing against Ben Carlson. I, you know, he, he, was, he was in the Trump administration. But I like uh, Carrie Lake, and uh, if you want to leave a comment below, I mean, you tell me. I, I, I just think that Carrie Lake would be a better person. So uh, let's get into uh, my bookmarks. Um, there we go, bookmarks, all bookmarks. So uh, this is Glenn Greenwald. Uh, the massacre and historic size of Trump's victory should lead to some self reflection about what caused the complete collapse of faith in the legitimacy of U.S. institutions of authority and justice, whereby voters so easily disregard four felony cases, <laughs> being charged with insurrection on multiple occasions, two impeachments, and an irrelevant, if not an asset, of the Russian uh, Federation. I think the American people are waking up to the lies, the lies, the lies their government tells them. I think it's a huge development, and I think it's a beautiful thing. Oh, let's see. Then we got into clandestine. I think Vivek was always on Trump's side. Uh, let's get, get the full text up here. The brief media shuffle that was just theater the day before the primary to create an illusion of distance. Vivek always knew he was going to endorse Trump, and Trump is already singing his praises. Vivek staying in the race uh, for Iowa was just a formality. Vivek's job was to be on Trump stand-in and articulate Trump's agenda effectively to a broader audience that had been turned off by Trump himself. He woke up a lot of people this way and, and garnered a lot of support, which he has now transferred to Trump via endorsement. Vivek did his job, and I hope he can find himself a role in the Trump administration because he's a sharp... Well, I mean, he is a sharp dude, man. I mean, have you ever seen him? I mean, good Lord. When he barbecued Nikki in the debate, <laughs> oh, my God. That was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Anyway, that, that, that's getting on to the election. 
Now, this was uh, from Jason Hinkle, and I just talked about this. Iran just bombed U.S. military bases in Iraq. The Western warmongers are getting a taste of their own medicine. Now, I don't know anything about this. I haven't seen anything in the news, but I wanted to be the first to report on it. Uh, I knew that they hit the uh, ISIS troops in uh, Syria, but man, if they've, if they've escalated to hit in Iraq, all bets are off. I mean, we're talking regional war. Uh, good Lord, this thing's escalating crazily. I hope the American people are prepared. Hold on to your drop straps because the, the terrorists uh, that are in the United States, we've got 8 million illegal aliens in the United States. I can't imagine that all of them are going to be uh, uh, okay. Benny Johnson, Trump wins all 99 counties in Iowa. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, look at the map. Can you see that on the video? I mean, the, the, there's not a on Trump place that didn't he didn't win. So, oh my god. All right, so let's keep going. Did you know there is a German girl who is a war reporter on the Russian side? And uh her name her name is Alina Lip and uh She's been running her channel for the second year now in Russian and German, directly from Donbass, and fighting against Western propaganda. Because of this, the German authorities have brought... Imagine this. Well, you see how the West is shutting down? Now, if you didn't know, Europe didn't broadcast any of the South African case in the uh, International Court of Criminal Justice against uh, the Zionist genocide that's taking place in Gaza. They didn't broadcast a second, but they broadcast the BBC. They broadcast the whole Israeli defense against it. So the censorship that's taking place in the West, the West that claims to be the, the free, the free part of the world. <coughs> oh my God, don't get me started. But uh, the video in German... In the Russian trenches is a new report by Elena straight from the trenches, and then it, it, you can you can, if you want to go up you can watch the video. This is from Z L A T T I seven one. I tell you what, he, he he does a lot of good reporting on Russia. I'm a follower of his. He's a follower of mine. We follow each other back and forth. Uh, DD Geopolitics, boy, I tell you, they do a great job. I mean, if you ever want to watch, uh, they are on X broadcasting quite often. You should check them out. So as of now, the following targets have been reported hit by missiles. Now, I don't know. I'm just reading. I mean, and by the way, they're a very reliable source. So I tend to believe what they're reporting here. An American base at the Airbill Airport. The U.S. consulate in Arabil, local headquarters of the Kurdish Security Service, private residence of a local businessman associated with Mossad. There is a high ambulance activity in Ebel, and the extent of casualties is unclear, but it is evident that there will be casualties with such attacks. ABC News, citing Iraqi security forces, claim no U.S. civilians were harmed in the IRGC attacks on Airbill. However, Iraqi resistance forces report that at least five U.S. citizens are dead. Eyewitnesses allegedly report high casualties and extreme censorship. So you won't hear about this on any channel, but that cybersecurity guy, there you go. All right, so let's get into Megatron breaking. Boy, this this, that's, this is huge. This is huge. I mean, if this is true, oh my God. You know, and, and like I said, I, I reported on a ship that might have been attacked, a U.S. warship. I still see nothing. Nothing that confirmed that or disputed it. But anyway, Megatron reports uh, Egyptian or, yeah, Egyptian clashes reported by the Israeli media. Palestinian media reports... Palestinian media, I mean, take that with a grain of salt, reports about the heavy clashes at the Egyptian border with the Gaza Strip. Israeli Channel reports that Egyptian army soldiers crossed the Israeli border and opened fire against 
Israeli border guard forces. Whole damn world's gone crazy, hadn't it? Holy shit. So uh, that's that's it for this video. I mean, I just, uh, I had to report. I mean, when I saw that Trump just dominated uh, the, the election, I, I just, I, I pray for him to survive. I don't see how the deep spate, I mean, they're going to assassinate him. And then what's going to happen? The whole damn United States is going to erupt into a civil war. And, uh, but the deep state, they're not going to let him be president. No way, no how. They, they are going to stand against him. And I know he's got secret service, but how many of those secret service are really loyal? You know, they work for the deep state <laughs> when you think about it. So I don't know, man. Say hi to the boo dog. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.